<laughs> okay, good morning and a warm welcome to all the viewers and participants joining us on Masa University's Facebook page and YouTube channel. We are delighted to have you here for the webinar series hosted by the Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and Information Technology at Masa University. Today, we all be hearing a presentation from IR Dr. Aidi Hizami bin Alias. I am Yashi and I'm honored to be your moderator for today's session. IR Dr. Aidi Hizami bin Alias obtained his PhD in Civil Engineering from the University of Auckland, New, New Zealand in 2015. IR Dr. Aidi Hizami has obtained a professional qualification as a BEM professional engineer, a Bentley qualified trainer for the open buildings designer, a Bentley qualified trainer for Synchro Pro, and, recogn and recognition as an academic advisor for vocational colleges under the Technical and Vocational Education Division. Ministry of Education. Currently, IR Dr. ID Hizami holds the position as head of the UPM Bentley BIM Advancement Lab and a senior lecturer in the Department of Civil Engineering. So, without further ado, I would like to welcome IR Dr. ID Hizami bin Alias, who will be speaking to us with the topic of emerging technologies in digital construction. All right, I add Dr. Aidi Hizami, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Yashi. All right, uh, and thank you, Masa, uh, for the invitation, for the kind invitation. Uh, Assalamualaikum and hi, all. All right, so today we are going to be, uh, so I'm honored to be here uh, to be talking on the emerging, uh, on the topic of emerging technologies in digital construction. All right, so hopefully, <clears throat> This will add up to uh, to your knowledge and uh, in your future career, since we are all going towards uh, digital uh, digitalization nowadays. All right. Um, so in my session, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Okay. Uh, I believe that uh, Yashi, the moderator, is going to take out the questions. All right. And if you want, I can just answer, or we can leave it at the end of the session. All right. But still, uh, I want. If possible, I wanted to have a two-way communication. All right. So if you have any questions, just feel free to, uh, to, 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 to post that. All right. So today we are going to cover on a few topics. All right. Um, so when we talk about emerging technologies, uh, when we talk about uh, digital construction, of course, uh, we need to go back to the basic of it, uh, which is the evolution of construction technologies. We need to know uh, how it started and where we are now. All right, then we are going to talk about the core technologies shaping the future. All right, so, um, and then uh, we're going to talk about uh, BIM. So BIM is one of the, uh, the, the core technologies that enables all these other technologies. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about the AI and machine learning. <clears throat> we're going to talk about VR, AR, and IoT in construction. And we're going to talk about uh, accessibility and ethical consideration as well. All right. So, about me, so my name is uh, Aidi Hizami. All right, I'm a senior lecturer in civil engineering department, UPM, and I'm currently the head of UPM Bentley Beam Advancement Lab. Uh, and my expertise is on Beam, digital construction, and sustainable engineering. All right, so a bit about our lab. Uh, so, our lab is um, established together with uh, Bentley. So, we have uh, uh, an understanding with uh, Bentley, and currently we are the uh, official training partner for Bentley. Uh, the and the only training partner for Bentley in universities uh, globally. All right, and uh, apart from that, uh, UPM Bentley Beam Investment Lab is also recognized as one of the uh, industry forward, uh, one of the seven industry forward competence center in Malaysia, uh, seven or eight. All right, and our task uh, given by MITI and also KPT uh, is to uh, disseminate knowledge and skills on uh, digital construction, uh, especially digital construction. All right, so I have a video of our lab, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I cannot be, uh, you cannot play it uh, under the stream yard. All right, so later uh, at the end of the session, if you have time, then I'll play some of the videos that I have uh, in the slides. All right, <clears throat> so the theme for today, all right, is building the future together unveiling the digital revolution in construction all right so we want to unveil 
what are the how is uh, construction being revolutionized digitally all right so we're going to talk about some of the software some of the technologies uh, available for this uh, digital construction all right so the objective of the session okay first is to uh, to have the understanding on the influence of emerging technologies in construction all right and then we're going to explore the integration of beam ai vr ar and 3d printing all right so and then we're going to identify the role of digital tools in, in, in enhancing sustainability and efficiency. And we're going to discuss future skills and knowledge requirements in the field. All right. So when we have a change of technology, there will be new skills and new knowledge requirements coming in. So we're going to discuss on that as well. All right. <clears throat> so first topic, we're going to talk about evolution of construction technologies. All right. So before we go forward, we need to know our history. All right, so we're going to talk about some of the uh, timeline of the, uh, of construction. All right, so we start with the traditional foundation of construction. All right, so construction started with handcrafted techniques. All right, so during that time, detailed manual methods were the cornerstone of construction. All right, uh, most of the traditional construction, they depends on local resources, all right, uh, scaling challenges. So when we talk about something uh during the early stage of construction when we talk about something very big very complex okay it's going to be a challenge all right because there are limitations in managing large-scale projects due to lack of precise tools all right and then role of labor during that time we don't have that much machineries and we depends on intensive manpower with skill specific traits uh dominating the scene for example we have uh in malaysia we have tukang rumah all right so they depends on hand tools, okay, and uh, intensive manpower, all right. And during that time, emergence of change, okay, uh, necessity and innovation paving the way for the first technological innovation, all right. So during that time, we uh, the 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 players uh, feel that okay, they need to have a change, right? They uh, there is a necessary uh, requirement for them to change, all right and that paved uh, the way for the first technological uh, advances all right and then when after that we go towards the early technological innovations all right so this time was during the industrial revolutions impact in 1980s all right so during this time we have mass produced steel and emergence of modern architecture okay but still there are limitations all right, and then uh, during 1980s, we have reinforced concrete as well. Okay, uh, during this early technological innovation, we have reinforced concrete. Okay, and the thing about uh, this reinforced concrete is that uh, due to the emergence of reinforced concrete, we have revolutionized the building strength and allowing for new design possibilities instead of just depending on timber. All right, now we have concrete. All right, and then heavy machinery interaction. So we have cranes, bulldozers coming in. All right. And then uh, we have prefab elements, all right, standardization of components for efficiency, leading to faster construction times. And we have skyscraper evolution as well. All right. So it, if you still remember, in, during the 1980s, okay, uh, 1980s, 1990s, we have uh, KLCC coming in Malaysia. All right. So those are the early technological innovations. All right. And then the computer age arrives. All right. So one very distinct feature of this computer age is the birth of CAD. Okay, computer aided design and uh, computer aided design. All right. So transitioning from hand drawing to computer aided design for precision. All right. And due to this computer aided design, we have digital efficiency as well. All right. And apart from digital efficiency, also we have the uh, accuracy and also the repetition. Uh, the 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 uh, allowing of repetition of uh, design, all right? So impact on design can allow for complex iterative designs uh, previously not possible during uh, using hand-drawn, okay? But during that time, okay, when uh, when we have CAD, okay, we, uh, they, uh, they, they are issues on adoption and resistance because early tech adopters, okay, they, they wanted to use CAD while the traditionalists, okay, they wanted to use the still the hand drawn, okay, hand drawing, all right, and that similar uh, similar uh, scenario is being seen nowadays, okay, with the advancement of uh, technologies towards beam and so on and so forth, 
where the early tech adopters they wanted to use uh, these new technologies while they traditionally still wanted to use CAD. All right, so we are going to discuss on that uh, a bit later. All right, so software revolution as well. Okay, so once with the computer age, okay, and then we have software revolution. So the computer age starts with uh, the, the usage of computer, okay, and then the software revolutionized, right? So we have project management software uh, like Microsoft Project, Primavera, uh, 3D modeling emergence from 2D draft, okay, uh, to 3D models using SketchUp, uh, using AutoCAD 3D, okay? Uh, collaborative platforms, all right, enabling multiple stakeholders to collaborate on a single digital platform. Uh, database utilization, uh, data, using databases to manage and track construction materials and costs, all right, using Excel, for example. Software milestones, all right, so some of the software includes uh, AutoCAD, AutoCAD 3D, uh, Excel, Microsoft Office, and so on and so forth. So those are the software revolution, uh, revolutionary, uh, revolution in construction, okay? And currently, uh, starting from 2010 onwards, Okay, we have the dawn of building information modeling. All right. So the one important thing about BIM is BIM enables the usage of other technologies. Okay, so we are going to discuss on that uh, a bit later. Okay, so what is BIM actually? So BIM is actually a new paradigm that integrates information into a digital model. All right. So instead of just AutoCAD 3D, for example. Okay, so instead of just 3D, where uh, if you're talking about uh, normal 3D, so 3D is actually just a plane and uh, plane and lines. All right. So when we talk about uh, beam, so beam is a parametric models where within each elements there will there uh, we can input information uh, data into it. All right. So we're going to discuss that uh, a bit later. All right. So uh, beam enable uh, design facilitation, uh, facilitation, uh, construction and maintenance. All right. Uh, BIM uh, enables real-time collaboration as well, okay, where we can have, a, for example, a simplest example, we have an account, okay, and this, uh, and BIM uh, allows, enables simultaneous input and updates from diverse project teams. So this project architect can start on this uh, BIM architecture, all right, and then uh, structural, uh, MEP, and so on and so forth, all right? So we have simultaneous input and updates. Uh, risk mitigation, okay, BIM uh, in research nowadays and in practice in some of the countries, uh, including Malaysia, okay, uh, they are using BIM to leverage for clashes and design incons inconsistency before construction, all right? So uh, for Malaysia, uh, in, uh, for, uh, in Malaysia, okay, JKR is mandating the usage of BIM for clashes and design reviews before the ground is being broken. All right, so we're going to discuss on that later. Okay, uh, beam simulation. Okay, advancement in beam technology over the years. Okay, so we start with a uh, simple beam, and currently we are talking about uh, we are not just talking about beam anymore. We are talking about something uh, advanced, uh, which uh, includes digital digital twin and so on and so forth. All right, so we're going to discuss that uh, in detail later. So this is just the the the, the uh, prelim of the technologies that actually change uh, the construction uh, industry uh, scenarios. Okay, and then we have uh, Internet of Things. All right, so connecting construction sites, implementing IoT for real time data uh, gathering and monitoring. All right, so we have uh, sensors, for example, being put into some of the sites. Okay, for uh, real time data gathering and monitoring. Okay, for example, the simplest example, um, uh, the usage of uh, uh, smoke detector or smoke uh, measure, all right, uh, inside or on site, uh, sound measure. Okay, so those are being implemented in some of the sites in Malaysia. Uh, smart materials, sensors embedded in construction materials, providing data on structural health. Okay, uh, automated machinery, uh, IoT enabled machinery that can operate semi autonomously for efficiency. So we are in some other countries, they have automated machinery already uh, using IoT and safety and, and IoT, wearable tech for worker safety and accident prevention. So we're going to go into, into detail uh, in a later slide. All right. And then due to the smart materials that we have nowadays, okay, so we have 3D printing in construction. Okay, so 3D printing is just uh, is similar to this uh, uh, small scale printing. 
Okay, but we are talking about something uh, uh, very big. Okay, for example, in Germany, uh, two years ago, they have printed their first house. Uh, they have 3D printed their first house. In China as well, uh, in, in Malaysia, we have 3D printing uh, coming in, in uh, came in in 2021, uh, end of 2021, and they are currently in R&D for this uh, 3D printing, and we expect 3D printing to become a norm in Malaysia in uh, years to come. All right. Uh, building components, uh, printing complex building components on demand. Uh, examples of entire structures printed using 3D technology. For example, in China, we have a number of uh, buildings being 3D printed. Uh, in Germany, they have uh, buildings as well. All right. Uh, in Malaysia, we are going to see that in years to come. All right. And future of 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing will continue to influence construction because we are trying to uh, uh, reduce our dependency on human okay and uh, focus on something that is uh, that we can control in terms of quality in terms of uh, speed and so on and so forth all right so the future of 3d printing is uh, going to uh, further influence uh, the construction industry uh, globally all right and then when we uh, and then after 3d printing currently we have ai as well Okay, so AI, artificial intelligence, uh, is the top of uh, the, 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 the world nowadays. Okay, and uh, construction industry is also gaining uh, the, uh, uh, is also being influenced by AI movement as well. All right, so we have a number of um, technologies coming in, okay, using AI. Okay, uh, some of it is under research. Uh, some of it uh, have already been implemented. Okay, for example, AI in design. Okay, uh, predictive analysis, resource management, robotics in construction, and AI's growing role. Okay, because uh, currently AI is able to Im to mimic, uh, to imitate the, the thinking of human. Okay, the thinking of these uh, stakeholders. All right, so they are currently being uh, researched and being uh, and and uh, trying to be implemented in in construction industry. So we are going to talk about that a bit later as well. All right, and then we have, uh, due to the advent of uh, BIM as well, so we have the possibility of augmented reality, AR, and virtual reality. All right, so uh, we have immersive design review using VR. Okay, so we have, we are able to walk through digital models, uh, okay, before the before construction or be, before the ground is being broken. Uh, AR on the job site, okay, um, so we are going to talk about that a bit later. Uh, training and safety. Right, so VR and AR being used for training uh, and safety, where uh, VR and AR is actually um, uh, a bit of uh, the technology is it was uh, already being used by 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 other uh, industry, uh, uh, medical, mechanical, and so on and so forth. And currently, due to the advancement of technologies, we are able to use VR and AR for construction uh, industry as well. Yes, uh, client engagement, all right, enhancing client presentation and feedback with AR and VR experiences. Um, uh, okay, and then breakthrough AR VR technologies, uh, specifically developed for construction. All right, so we have a number of uh, softwares, a number of technologies, a number of methods uh, that is uh, that use AR and VR uh, that is uh, that are specifically developed for construction industry. So again, we're going to talk about that a bit later. Okay, now, when we talk about this technological change, okay, why, do, why does this change happening? Okay, why, why do construction industry change? Okay, there are three factors that is affecting the, 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 the change of uh, technology uh, usage in, in construction. Okay, the first is economic factors. Because when we talk about construction, we are going to talk, we cannot run away from profit and cost. Okay, so cost efficiency drive. All right, so uh, using, uh, uh, when we compare our, uh, when we compare the traditional construction, for example, okay, the waste, okay, is, uh, for example, uh, the waste is uh, on the high side. Okay, so now when we use um, technology, okay, we can reduce waste. Right, so we can increase the profit margins, for example. Uh, global competitive landscape. Now, for example, if 
the contractor or or if the stakeholder in Malaysia okay wanted to use uh, wanted to have a project in Singapore for example okay so they need to have uh, uh, the, the 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 technological skills okay technological usage okay in order for them to compete okay uh, globally investment in technology okay trends in investment and venture capital in construction technology startups so currently we are seeing a lot of construction technology startups coming in all right uh, economic crisis and responses for example uh during be, before mco for example okay we uh we are not focusing too much on the technological change but during mco when we have the uh, limitation of workers okay uh, uh foreign workers especially now we understand that okay we need to have technology okay uh, uh that crisis have taught us that we need to have technology to actually reduce our dependency on um foreign workers for example so we have ibs coming in we have uh digital construction coming in and so on so forth uh, market demand shifts okay uh, consumer and client demands for faster cheaper and smarter buildings okay for example um used to be uh, for for example a a a a building okay before this might take uh, three years uh three or four years to to complete for example okay but uh using technology we can actually reduce that okay and the consumer and client is actually demanding for faster cheaper and smarter buildings and that can that drive the change uh in technology uh usage for construction industry as well second factors is environmental factors all right so second drivers of change is the environmental factors okay um before this we are uh, we okay uh, during the early stage of construction okay we are not uh we're not too focused on the environmental parts okay but currently due to the sustainability movement we are focusing on the environmental factors as well so means that we still want to have the construction we still have want to have the development but at the same time we don't want to have uh, we want to preserve our environment for uh, our uh, future generations okay which is the gist of sustainability all right so because of that we understand that we need to have technology coming in okay so that we can actually preserve our environment okay so the growing need for environmentally responsible construction practices Okay, uh, building uh, regulatory pressures. Okay, for example, uh, if you are talking about um, construction uh, in uh, in a residential area, for example, so we are ne we need to be concerned on the uh, the noise, uh, the uh, smoke, uh, uh, and so on and so forth, right? And that regulatory pressures can actually uh, drive the change for technological uh some uh, uh, uh technology where uh, for example iot okay where we use that technology to uh, to follow the regulation the regulation within that area uh resource scarcity okay so now this resource scarcity is one of the highly debated issue in sustainability where we understand that the resources that we are using for construction okay um and other industries as well including construction is actually doing uh is actually uh scarcity uh uh is actually limited in nature all right and the 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 the, the usage uh with uh, the without limitation okay can actually uh induce resource scarcity for example uh steel uh uh cement and so on and so forth okay and that can actually affect our construction industry okay before the resource be become scarce okay the resource is going to be a lot more uh more expensive okay because we don't have that and we are actually fighting for that particular limited uh resources uh climate change impact uh responding to the challenges of extreme weather and its effect on construction and also green technology the integration of renewable energy and eco-friendly materials okay so those are the environmental factors and the final factors that can drive change is the technological factors okay so we have the technology so first is the rapid advancement in technology so we have the technology why don't we use it okay before this we don't have that technology so we use other type other method now we have that technology coming in we have vr ar we have beam we have digital twin uh we have uh, ai so we have that and 
uh, that can actually change, uh, can actually drive the change uh, of the technological usage in construction. Interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary tech convergence. All right. So the blending of information technology with construction. Okay. So currently um, in research, uh, most of the uh, researchers on construction, on civil engineering in, in construction, okay, they are going to include uh, the information, uh, the IT uh, researcher, okay, because we are uh, focusing on the interdisciplinary tech convergence, the, 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 the technical knowledge of civil, okay, is being uh, integrated with the technical knowledge of IT. Uh, automation and robotics, uh, potential in the construction industry. Okay, um, so uh, if you notice, uh, if you notice, most of the work uh, in construction industry is repetitive. Okay, and can be automated. All right. For example, if you are talking about um, uh, plastering, for example. Okay, so plastering is a, a, a repetitive uh, uh, task. Okay, which can be automated uh, using robots. Okay, um, in China, for example, okay, they have been using robots. Okay, for some of the construction works, uh, construction tasks, uh, including uh, for plastering, for spraying, and so on and so forth. Okay, the best thing about using robots is we can control the quality. Okay, and we can predict the 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 we can forecast the quality of the work. Uh, data driven decision making. Okay, uh, currently in, in order for, for uh, stakeholders to decide on, uh, to make any decision on the uh, certain issue of uh, in construction, okay, they need to have data, okay. So they need to have data uh, for their, their uh, decision to be more accurate and to be more representative, okay. And currently uh, realizing that, so currently, <clears throat> this technological factors, uh, the date, the requirement for data driven is actually changing the, uh, uh, the, the the usage of technology in construction industry. Uh, innovation culture, the industry's going growing embrace of a culture that encourages technological experimentation. Okay, but uh, the one thing about construction industry is, uh, according to research, uh, in comparison to other industry. Uh, what the one distinct features of construction industry is uh, the resistance to change, okay, uh, means meaning to say that um, the construction industry uh, they 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 is difficult to change uh, the 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 method um, of doing construction, okay, um, <clears throat> in comparison to other industry, okay. Uh, the reason being, okay, uh, construction industry is unique in nature. Uh, the the the, the uh, projects are unique in nature and uh, a certain um, changes okay, can mean, uh, can either be positive or negative towards the costing. Okay, and that's why they, uh, the stakeholders in construction industry is a bit hard to change, uh, it's difficult, difficult to, to, to change. Okay, but regardless, some of the, some of the stakeholders, okay, they embrace a culture that encourages technological experimentation. All right, so, the second topic that I would like to, to, to discuss is on BIM. Okay, so we have we have discussed a number of technologies um, in construction industry. Okay, and the one thing that enables all these uh, changes is BIM. Okay, building version modeling. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, so what is BIM actually? Okay, so BIM, uh, I, which I guess most of the students of Masa is uh, well aware. Okay, so BIM is actually a parametric uh, model. Okay, so it's a parametric and it's, it's an intelligent model. All right. So basically, if we have uh, a model of BIM, okay, so we have uh, means that all the elements within that particular 3D model, okay, contains information. Okay, and the best thing about that is that information can be uh, seen by computer by the softwares. Okay, and once it can be seen by the software, it can be extracted and we can do analysis on that. Okay, uh, we can do analysis, we can do uh, a number of things using that particular information. So if you still remember, one of the uh, drivers of change uh, under technical factors is data driven. So we need data to in order for us to decide, in order to analyze. Okay, so BIM provides that uh, 
specifically provide that data okay and that's the reason that's one of the reasons why most of the countries are uh, changing towards beam as compared to normal 3d okay so when we um, for example when we talk about autocad 3d for example autocad 3d uh, is a 3d model but it's not beam model because all if we uh, develop a 3d model using autocad for example all right uh, the 3d that we are seeing okay is not uh, it's not parametric means that it's just planes all right so it's just planes and lines okay whereas beam for example using autodesk revit uh, using open buildings uh, using tecla using a number of other softwares okay uh, each of the elements contain information all right uh, that information in, uh, can include uh, the strength of the concrete for example uh, the maintenance and so on and so forth all right uh, and using beam as a platform okay uh, it can be combined with IoT for live monitoring and management. Okay, um, since Beam, uh, since we can include information within Beam, okay, and but that particular information can be uh, interrelated with IoT for live monitoring and management. Okay, uh, Beam and AI. Okay, uh, artificial intelligence for predictive analysis and smart Beam enhancements. Okay, again, AI is uh, weak. AI is being enabled. Okay, uh, due to the uh, data provided within uh, B models. Okay, so AI and uh, so later we're going to discuss on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and how these are uh, interrelated between these two. Okay, and how this actually provides uh, the platform for uh, predictive analysis uh, using BIM. Uh, augmented and virtual reality. Okay, B models driving immersive AR and VR experiences for stakeholders. Okay, and looking ahead, the potential of BIM in shaping the future of construction technology where, for example, in some of the countries, the submission for the PBT, um, the, the local authority, okay, uh, requires the usage of BIM. Okay, it's not uh, CAT anymore. Okay, they, they require the usage of uh, BIM uh, format for submission. Okay, and that particular submission uh, and that particular BIM models uh, after the construction will be used for facility management purposes uh, as the as built. Okay, later we'll discuss on that. All right, so we talk about BIM. Okay, so there are seven dimensions in BIM. Okay, it starts with 3D. Okay, uh, the, the, it starts with three dimensional BIM. Okay, the core of BIM where we have special dimensions uh, providing a realistic visualization of the physical project. Okay, and again, I would like to stress out realistic visualization plus data so it's not just visualization but we have data within each of the elements uh, and then we have 4d beam okay where we in, where we integrate 3d uh beam model with uh the uh, uh planning of the project uh, the cpm or the project management okay so we introduce time related information <clears throat> and we can use this for project scheduling and timeline tracking okay uh, in some of the uh, uh, project, uh, in in some of the research that have been conducted, uh, one uh, a few of my students have I have conducted uh, research on 4D beam, for example. Okay, and some of them looks at the uh, risk. Okay, uh, the the uh, risk identification, risk analysis, risk management using 4D beam. Uh, uh, 4D beam for critical. Um, uh, for critical projects, for example, if you're talking about highways, if you're talking about uh, bridges, all right. So we need to understand. We need to uh, schedule the project so that the uh, the project uh, will have minimal disruption towards traffic, for example, all right. And we need to have a visualization of that instead of just numbers uh, within the uh, project scheduling uh, software. Okay. So using 4D Beam, we can actually relate these two. Okay, time and also the uh, model. Okay, and that can actually uh, improve our decision, improve our scheduling uh, of the project. And then we have 5D BIM, where we have 3D uh, plus time plus with the cost. Okay, uh, one good thing about 5D BIM uh, is that apart from we can have the uh, quantity, uh, the, 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 the cost, the, the more accurate costing of the uh, project, it can also be used uh, to track 
the 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 this expenditure the the costing of the project okay so that uh, we don't have uh, we won't have any uh, cost overshoot or uh, the cost will still be within the limitation of the project okay and uh, i ha we have one uh, stu uh, i have one students uh, working on this uh, five D work on this 5d beam where they use eva okay uh, earn value analysis uh, uh, for <clears throat> uh, cost tracking of a project and then we have 6D and 7D beam. Uh, 6D is on sustainability metrics, and 7D is on facility management. Okay. Uh, again, this uh, beam model. Okay. Uh, after going through 4D and 5D, is going to go into 6D and 7D, and that will be regarded as the as beam model of uh, of a uh, of the the, the 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 structure or the infrastructure. All right. Uh, beam can be. Uh, can be integrated into project life cycle. So if you look at the um, the usage of beam from the uh, conception uh, towards the uh, construction towards the operation and maintenance, we can see the usage of beam uh, uh, from the start of the project until the end of the project. Okay, until the maintenance part. Okay, for conception and feasibility. Okay, uh, beam can be used for initial visualizations and feasibility assessments. Okay, uh, usually during the conception, it will be uh, LOD 100, LOD 200. Okay, and then during design coordination, uh, beam aids in detailed design development, interdisciplinary coordination, and documentation. Okay, <clears throat> uh, one good thing about beam is, and uh, one of the good things about beam is, uh, is that uh, beam is a smart model. Okay, uh, intelligent modeling techniques. Okay, where it can be used uh, for documentation purposes as well. Okay, so we create in three D. Okay, for the simplest one, we can create in three D. Okay, and we can actually produce drawings from that particular three D. <clears throat> but uh, there are limitations in software uh, nowadays. Okay, on the uh, drawing part. Okay, but still, regardless, uh, it is being. Um, uh, it is still uh, being researched, uh, being R and D, and it's going to get better in the future. Uh, construction documentation, okay, uh, managing detail uh, construction documents within Beam, okay, <clears throat> uh, construction phase uh, using 4D and 5D, okay, for on-site coordination, uh, sequencing, and change management. And after the construction, okay, uh, once we have the SB model of the Beam. Okay, uh, we are going to have, uh, we're going to use the BIM uh, model for operation and maintenance. Okay, uh, during this stage, usually uh, later we're going to discuss on the IoT, AR and VR as well. All right, uh, project visualization and simulation. Okay, uh, <clears throat> uh, one of the, um, okay, according to research, one of the uh, causes uh, one of the main causes of change uh, change order of variation order VO or CO okay is the inability of the uh, funder of the client to actually visualize the projects uh, before the construction project okay before the construction commenced okay for example uh, if I'm the owner if I'm the client okay I wanted to have a, a, a five story building for example okay using auto uh, using 2D and 3D, okay, is a bit hard for me to 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 understand if I'm not the if I'm not well versed in um, civil engineering, if I'm not well versed in uh, uh, technical drawings, okay. So if I cannot see, okay, then uh, as the construction progresses, okay, at one point I I, I might say that okay, uh, can you make this room bigger? Can you can you not have the columns there, okay? And that can actually uh, entails the um the change order which can actually uh change order and rework and that can actually increase the cost of the project okay now using beam okay we can have a uh, beam ar and vr okay we can have project visualization okay we can visualize the projects in high detail before the ground is broken and that can reduce the possibility the risk of change order due to uh owner's requirement okay uh, simulating construction sequences, okay, as we have discussed before using 4D, we can run simulations to foresee and mitigate potential issues. For example, um, if I'm building a project in, 
in in Kelantan Terengganu or Pahang. Okay, for example. So we understand that at the end of the year, okay, this area is going to have a lot of rain. <coughs> Okay, and when we have a lot of rain, we basically we cannot uh, uh, we cannot just simply uh, pour concrete, uh, simplest one, for example, right? All right, so we uh, uh, realizing that I can run simulation uh, to foresee uh, the the construction. Okay, and since BIM is actually a, a parametric model, okay, I can link that to weather forecast. Okay, and I can check whether there are any issues on weather okay during my uh, pouring of concrete okay and that can actually reduce the risk for uh, uh, <coughs> the the the, the <coughs> what we call that uh, the risk for the project to uh, de to be delayed okay virtual reality integration um, using b models to create immersive vr walkthroughs for clients and stakeholders Okay, in some of the countries, uh, they they the 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 B model can actually be linked with VR and AR, and the uh, client they requested for a walkthrough or fly through of the B model before the project is uh, before the construction is being commenced. Okay, and <clears throat> whatever changes they wanted, okay, they can be done before the construction commence. Okay, the key here is. <clears throat> Uh, the key here is to have the change before the construction commence. Okay, once the construction has started, any change will incur uh, uh, will be uh, will be expensive, will, will be costly. Okay, so if it's if if, if the construction haven't uh, hasn't commenced yet, then we still have uh, the changes will not be as expensive as costly as uh, during the construction commence. Interactivity, uh, BIM's capacity for interactive exploration of different design options. Again, uh, this can be done using CAD as well, but it's going to take a lot of time. Okay, but using BIM, since BIM is a smart uh, parametric model, okay, the design options, the what if can be explored, okay, uh, very easily. For example, uh, what if we have uh, the doors here? What if we have uh, this type of window? What if we change the dimension here? Okay, it can be explored. Okay, uh, easily. Uh, or this scenario of the uh, different design options, and communication tool as well. Okay, beam serve as a vital communication bridge between technical teams and non-technical stakeholders due to the ability of beam uh, to provide project visualization and simulation. For example, if I'm the owner, I don't. And I'm not from civil engin uh, engineering uh, background. Okay, using BIM for project visualization and simulation. Okay, uh, the stakeholders can actually, uh, I can actually understand uh, the project better. All right, uh, BIM for clash detection and risk mitigation. So clash detection is, uh, as being discussed before, uh, is mandated uh, by JKR uh, for projects uh, using BIM. Okay, so clash detection. Um, Okay, because uh, one of the another reasons for for uh, delay and cost overrun is the change order uh, due to clashes between disciplines. For example, if I have a beam, okay, uh, and that beam is actually uh, collides uh, clashes with the uh, door, for example, the window, okay, and I need to change that. I, I need to change that particular uh, beam, for example, okay. That will take time, okay, for me to change that, okay, and that will incur extra cost, okay, because the cost uh, for tender, okay, will be different as compared to cost during uh, for but, uh, variation order or change order, okay, the cost for variation order will be uh, according to the uh, current market price, whereas the tender price, uh, the tender cost will be uh, based on the discounted price, all right, so it's going to have is going to incur delay on my project and is going to incur extra cost as well. Uh, risk identification, uh, identify and mitigate potential risk. Okay, for example, uh, if I'm uh, if the project uh, if the project uh, requires working from high platform. Okay, so I know. Okay, using uh, BIM, I know that okay there will be a risk. Okay, at a certain date. Okay, because I know that that particular work is going to be done at a certain date. So I know that the risk will be that. 
okay, uh, during that certain date. Uh, automated code compliance, okay, uh, UBBL, uh, some of the building regulations, okay, enhanced safety planning, uh, BIM for planning out safety protocols and droughts on site, okay, and reducing rework, okay, uh, early detection of issues through BIM reduces costly on site rework. For example, if there are clashes, okay, and that clash uh, was not identified during the design phase, okay, during construction. Uh, the clash will need to be uh, need to be verified. Okay, need to be solved. Okay, and that particular uh, uh, clash okay requires rework, and that rework has been discussed before is going to be costly. Okay, and is going to incur extra time, which is unnecessary because we can actually detect that early on uh, using BIM. All right, uh, BIM is scheduling and project management. Okay, for the scheduling. Okay, as we have discussed before, uh, in terms of resource allocation, so whatever is being done using Microsoft Project and Primavera in terms of uh, resource allocation, okay, can actually be done using uh, BIM. For example, uh, we have uh, one of the popular one, uh, the uh, is uh, the Synchro Pro, uh, Synchro 4D Pro by Bentley. Uh, Navis work by Autodesk can actually uh, at some uh, to some extent can actually do the 4D scheduling as well. Uh, resource allocation as well okay um, but the idea is we want to optimize uh, the planning of manpower materials and machinery okay through beam because beam we have more we have the parameters we have the data and that data can actually uh, uh, help us to decide uh, the uh, on the planning of manpower materials and machinery all right and then Currently, when we talk about uh, sustainability, when we talk about cost, when we talk about profit, we cannot run away from lean construction. Okay, so lean construction is one of the uh, ways on how we can actually uh, reduce uh, the cost of a project. Okay, and BIM can actually support lean construction by minimizing waste and maximizing the value of the project. Uh, monitoring progress as well. Okay, so uh, one of one of the fundamental of construction project management is to to ensure uh, to monitor and control the progress of the project. Okay, so that the project can uh, actually can actually be completed within this stipulated time. Okay, now using BIM, okay, we can uh, visually compare that. Okay, the actual progress against the project plan. Okay, and we. Due, uh, due to the uh, ability of BIM for parametric, okay, we can actually compare the data as well. Okay, we can actually compare the data uh, of the current, uh, actual, and also the planning of the project. Okay, and uh, scheduling and project management as well. Uh, we can uh, BIM can actually uh, assist in communicating with the stakeholders by presenting clear visual schedules to team members and stakeholders. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, uh, the usage of 4D, okay, currently uh, is the the the, the uh, we call that as look ahead meeting. Okay, for example, if uh, the meeting is being done uh, uh, once every two weeks, all right. So the the progress meeting is being done once every two weeks. So during that meeting, we can have uh, the data, the the visual data of the progress of the project and as well as the planning for the next two weeks uh, the visual planning of the next two weeks okay and that can actually communicate better with the stakeholders okay including the team members where the team members can actually understand okay so this is what uh, need to be done within these two weeks all right uh, as compared to just data uh, as, uh, yeah, the numbers okay numbers uh, is going to be a bit hard to communicate with the stakeholders okay as compared to visual all right, uh, BIM in cost estimation and budget management. So 5D BIM benefits, uh, detail and accurate cost estimation linked to model elements. So once we have the BIM model, okay, we can actually uh, estimate the cost okay, using softwares. For example, uh, in, in Malaysia, uh, CIDB and JKR is uh, focusing on cost X software okay, for cost estimation uh, of a BIM model. Okay, so basically, uh without having to manually uh calculate all these uh the rebars the concrete and so on and so forth okay uh the formwork uh 
the windows and so on and so forth okay we can actually use cost x okay to link the b model to uh for cost estimation purposes right uh dynamic cost monitoring okay using real, real time tracking of budget changes okay as the design evolves uh using earn value analysis for example uh value engineering ve okay where we have multiple options okay and that particular options comes uh and we can uh, automate uh, we can uh, produce the cost automatically based on the design options as compared to if we change it uh, we change this way okay then uh, if you are do, if you are using manual uh, manual calculation manual estimation okay then it's going to take some time whereas if you have smart model where we can just okay we we change this to uh, something uh, to this material for example we can ha directly have the impact on the cost of the project uh, procurement strategy streamlining the procurement process through detailed quantity takeoffs from beam okay and life cycle cost analysis uh, forecasting future maintenance and operational costs using beam all right so these are the beam usage in cost estimation and budget management now uh, coming back to uh, the general uh, beam usage in construction general beam technology okay so as we can see beam is actually a catalyst for industry transformation Okay, now BIM is a foundation for digital twin. So digital twin is actually an extension of BIM where uh, once we have developed the BIM, okay, uh, the BIM model of a project, for example, okay, it can be uh, upgraded to digital twin. Okay, for example, in uh, for Bentley, we have iTwin. Uh, we have a number of other platform as well. Okay, and that particular digital twin okay, can be used okay, for uh monitoring uh and tracking purposes okay so digital twin is actually uh in simplest word uh in simplest term digital twin is a digital representation of exact digital replica of a uh of a physical uh physical building physical structure okay so whatever we want to do at the physical structure we can do it in digital twin first for example if i want to have a renovation Okay, uh, a, a renovation to 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 my house, for example. Okay, I can do that in digital uh, method first. Okay, see the effect. Then only I can do it in. Then I can uh, do in uh, the physical one. I can construct. I can renovate. Okay, and during the uh, and after renovation, I can expect what uh, I I know what to expect because I have run that simulation in my digital twin. Uh, interoperability challenges. Okay, uh, interoperability between different beam software and tools. Okay, so currently we have a number of uh, uh, big software developer for uh, beam. Uh, we have Bentley, we have uh, uh, Autodesk, we have uh, Archicad. We have a number of uh, softwares. Okay, and these particular softwares is producing their own file format. Okay, and one of the challenges here is to actually uh, ensure open beam uh, platform where it regardless of any software you use okay we are going to communicate uh with using a, a single file format okay means that if i'm using autodesk and you're using bentley for example we can still communicate okay and currently uh one of the progress uh in this interoperability is the ifc schema Okay, so IFC schema, okay, uh, is one uh, interoperable chain uh, file format where each of these big producer of uh, big software developer they have signed the treaty uh, under smart building. Okay, their software can actually be exported into IFC and can be imported from IFC. Okay, but currently uh, there are some issues with IFC uh, in terms of the. Uh, in terms of the uh, accuracy, in terms of the uh, accuracy of the model, basically, okay, and the data, okay, and that is currently being uh, R&D and being upgraded from time to time, okay. At one point, we can see this. Uh, hopefully, we can see this interoperability and open beam uh, uh, platform for uh, beam usage uh, in construction industry. Uh, beam and the future of construction. Okay, uh, BIM will continue to evolve with emerging technologies because, again, BIM have the, uh, using BIM, we will have the database, uh, a complete database, and that database is going to be uh, used for, uh, new technologies are going to come in and use that database. 
So BIM will continue to evolve. Uh, and uh, integration with uh, emerging technologies, okay, uh, and global BIM trends. So most of the countries are using BIM nowadays. Okay, they have changed, uh, they, are, they are focused on BIM. Okay, and um, according to my, 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 my discussion with one of the uh, researcher in, in UK, a uh, prominent researcher in UK, I was told that uh, when we, they are not focusing on BIM anymore, but they are focusing on digital twin. BIM is just a tool, okay, for them to, 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 to uh, a, a tool in construction, uh, in construction. And they are not focused on BIM anymore. They are focused on digital twin nowadays. All right, so that's BIM. Okay, so as we have discussed, BIM is going to have a, 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 a very big database. Okay, uh, for example, if I have a BIM model of a, a 20 story building, so ca you can imagine the, the amount of data that I have. Okay, and that particular data can be used for AI and machine learning. All right, so we're going to discuss a bit on uh, AI and machine learning in construction. So AI and machine learning in construction is one of the uh, prominent technology coming in. Okay, uh, it's very recent. Okay, uh, especially AI. Okay, uh, machine learning on the other hand, okay, is a, actually a uh, an old uh, technology. Okay, is being used for many years already. Okay, so machine learning is actually the basic uh, fundamental of AI. Okay, so machine learning is where we have the data, okay, and we are going to look at the trends, okay. So uh, there are a number of methods being used for machine learning. We have uh, fuzzy neural network, we have artificial neural network. Uh, for pictures, for graphics, we have CNN or convolutional neural network, okay. And these are going to provide the, the platform for artificial intelligence where based on the data, okay, based on the trends, okay, AI can use that to uh, for uh, to predict or to forecast, okay. Um, so currently in machine learning, we have uh, three methods. Uh, uh, we have a number of methods actually. Uh, we have supervised training, unsupervised training, and reinforcement learning. Okay, so that one is uh, very technical. All right. So um, uh, each of these uh, model. Okay, is they have their own pros and cons. Okay, they have their own strengths and weaknesses. Okay, and uh, these three are being used. Okay, um, uh, for uh, to to create this AI model. All right, so we are going to discuss that a bit later. Uh, but the one thing about machine learning, okay, is that it requires data. Okay, if the if the data is uh, uh, vast, okay, and is accurate then the prediction, the forecast will be uh, accurate, okay? So basically, um, uh, this one, uh, okay, well, uh, in, in, in uh, ecosystem industry, okay, uh, in, in, in uh, academics, okay, uh, in, in, academy, in, in academia, okay, uh, we have a term for this where we call it as G-I-G-O, okay, garbage in, garbage out, all right? But means that if the data is not, uh, is not, uh, is, it's not a quality data, okay? Then we don't, uh, we won't have a quality uh, or accurate prediction or forecasting. Uh, machine learning is also being integrated with BIM, okay? Because again, BIM have data, okay? And we have softwares to extract a certain information that we want from the data, and that certain information can be used with machine learning, okay? Uh, to to look for trends, okay? And to, to assist with uh, the, the, the decision that we are going to make. For example, okay, uh, for example, uh, if the project is progressing at this uh, rate, okay, so using, uh, based on the historical trends, based on the data that we have, okay, machine learning can actually predict uh, the, uh, the, the, the expected delays, for example, or the expected costs, okay, and so on and so forth, okay. Uh, goals of machine learning, Okay, uh, is to increase the efficiency, to reduce the cost, and to improve the safety of the project. Okay, again, using data. Okay, and this machine learning, okay, is providing the platform for AI. Okay, so AI or artificial intelligence, okay, um, okay, uh, 
uh, artificial intelligence um, is the the uh, generative soft uh, generative model of the machine learning. So machine learning is going to run the engine, and AI is going to uh, to to interact. Okay, uh, it's going to interact. So machine learning is actually the base of AI. Okay. AI is currently being used for uh, other uh, purposes, okay? Uh, for uh, for example, for graphics, uh, for information, okay? And due to the relevancy of AI, okay? Now AI is being researched to be used for construction industry as well, okay? So for example, um, there are researches on AI for risk management, okay? So basically, uh, if the if the trend is uh if the uh, the, the the trend of uh economics be in this way for example okay so what are the risks okay the risk can be actually uh, can actually be observed okay can actually be uh, managed analyzed and managed okay for <clears throat> to increase the uh preparedness of the project okay uh, there are so there are researchers on using ai for uh, uh, for for design purposes as well. Okay, so when we talk about something repetitive, all right. So if we have this 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 uh, parameters, so the design will be something like this. Okay, so if if we have that, then we can uh, the research is actually using that particular trend. Okay, to come up with the design uh, of the uh, particular uh, structure. Okay, automatically based on the historical trends. Okay, so what we need to have is just to input the data, okay, and the the the, the design will uh, automatically be uh, produced uh, for that particular structure. Uh, benefit of AI uh, in terms of efficiency, accuracy, and predictive capabilities that AI brings to construction projects. <coughs> okay, and recent advancements in AI technology have enabled its adoption uh, in construction. Okay, so before this, we are we only talk about uh, machine learning. Okay, but the advancements in machine learning towards AI, okay, have enabled its adoption in construction as well. Okay, so uh, currently is still in the infancy. Okay, but we are expecting to see more AI uh, models coming in into construction, specifically for construction uh, in the future. All right. So uh, in this session, we're going to explore how AI is revolutionizing construction management, okay, uh, uh, and the predictive analytics of uh, uh, AI in construction. All right. So AI in construction project management, for example, okay, it can be used for automated task management. Okay. So uh, in construction, it'll be uh, most of the work will be repetitive. For example, uh, simplest one: progress reports. Uh, uh cost analysis okay it will be something repetitive uh documentation forms okay and that if it's repetitive okay it can be automated and ai is actually providing uh the platform for that the there are researchers on <clears throat> uh developing the algorithm for automating schedule creation and updates okay uh in terms of resource allocation <clears throat> Okay, optimizing the allocation of labor, materials, and equipment. Okay, using AI based on the historical trends. For example, if I have this area, this big area, all right, how many machines do I need? How many materials? Uh, how many uh, labor? Okay, what type of labor can be? Um, uh, okay, uh, can uh, AI can actually be used to optimize the uh, the 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 uh, number of labor materials and equipment for that particular area that I want to clear, for example, uh, for artwork, for example. Uh, communication and coordination, uh, team collaboration through AI powered communication tools. Okay, so currently uh, I have seen uh, a few months ago, I've seen uh, there, there's a soft, uh, there's an AI software for uh, recording of uh, minutes of meetings. So basically, if there are, uh, there, if there's a meeting, I just need to run the software and that is going to minute all the uh, important information in uh, that particular meeting. Okay. Uh, so basically that can be, uh, AI can be used for communication tools as well. Okay. And progress monitoring, AI systems that track real-time progress against the project plan. Okay. So we have the actual progress. We have the uh, plan progress. Okay. Uh, 
pro, using 4D or 5D and that particular AI can actually uh, monitor that okay and can actually predict okay the the the, the expected delays or uh, the time of completion the, uh, the 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 final cost and so on and so forth okay using AI uh, AI is also being used for risk assessment in construction for example if a certain kind of project okay will have a different risk okay and that particular risk okay can be uh, interlinked with the B model okay and uh, either 4D or 5D okay and that particular uh, risk okay can be uh, analyzed okay uh, using AI and also uh, BIM okay uh, real time safety monitoring okay using IoT for example okay we have the uh, the data on uh, uh, for example uh, data on structural health okay monitoring all right so we have uh, structural health monitoring or wearable tags uh, for the team members okay for the workers right so we can have real time safety monitoring okay so basically the data will can be provided into uh, to AI Okay, and that particular AI can be used uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, uh, to have uh, to for for decision purposes. Okay, for monitoring purposes, uh, contract and compliance monitoring. Okay, for example, uh, delays, uh, cost overrun, and so on and so forth, and also the environmental impact assessments as well. Okay, uh, predict the environmental impact of construction activities. For example, uh, if I have a site, uh, a construction project. Okay, a site and a certain activities will have a, 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 a specific impact toward uh, the environment okay and that particular ai can be used okay to predict okay uh, if i have this type of activity what will the impact be towards the environment okay uh, that activity for example that activity is from this to this date okay so i can actually use ai and i can actually uh, get the impacts uh, from that the particular dates to it, uh, that particular dates, all right? And that is currently in research now. Uh, people, uh, researchers are actually researching that, okay, on the usage of AI for AI, uh, environmental impact as well. Okay, uh, predictive analysis, uh, focusing project outcomes, uh, in terms of quality control, uh, in terms of demand forecasting, uh, in terms of uh, maintenance prediction, okay? Uh, Okay, so these are the uh, predictive analysis uh, of use, uh, using AI. Okay, and again, AI is just the uh, is just the usage of machine learning techniques. Okay, for forecasting and predictive. Okay, uh, predicting and this predictive analysis can be used for uh, these purposes: uh, forecast uh, project outcomes, quality control, uh, forecasting, maintenance prediction, and so on and so forth. Okay, now challenges and opportunities for AI, okay, is in terms of data. Okay, we need data for AI to operate uh, accurately. Okay, uh, implementation barriers, uh, barriers to implementing AI and machine learning in established construction practices. Okay, so currently construction stakeholders are using this type of method. Okay, and they are, uh, some of them are being uh, uh, a bit resistive uh, towards change. Okay, so implementation barriers uh, is there uh, on the usage of AI in construction industry. Future trends with the emerging trends in AI means that most of the um, decisions are currently being researched okay, uh, using AI. And this uh, AI and machine learning is, is expected uh, to further impact the construction industry in the future. Okay, and this also provides opportunities for innovation. Okay, where uh, we have a number of new opportunities for applying AI and machine learning in construction, apart from, uh, especially for those uh, automated or uh, repetitive tasks. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so those, uh, that is for uh, uh, AI and machine learning. Okay, so we'll just go uh, a bit fast because it's already, it's already 11.40. Uh, apologies for the uh, delay. Uh, for, uh, for, for the overrun. Okay, so now let's look at the impact of VR and AR and IoT and construction. Okay, so what is VR? What is AR? Okay, VR is virtual reality <coughs> where uh, if we wear that, uh, if we we can use that uh, gadget and we can go inside uh, the uh, B model that we have created. 
okay we have developed okay so basically we can have uh we can uh we call that as immersive okay where we can go inside we can immerse into the model and we can see whether there are any changes required okay and we can uh if there are any changes required we can change that uh autom automatically during the <coughs> design stage okay as compared to construction stage AR on the other hand, augmented reality is where we bring that model outside into our own world. Okay, and since what uh, since BIM is a parametric model, okay, one of the data, one of the parameters that we can include inside the uh, elements is the GIS or GPS coordinate. Okay, due to that, we can actually wear uh, this uh, augmented reality. Okay, uh, currently in our lab, we have Hololens two. Okay, we can wear that and we can see that particular building being uh, uh that, that particular building placed in in the location that they wanted okay so basically if i wear that i can i can see the building uh already constructed uh in the area that i want okay so we i have some of the videos uh which you can uh refer to that uh, a bit later okay uh on the usage of ar and vr okay VR and AR for design visualization, okay, for 3D model interaction, for pre-construction visualization, uh, for iterative design process, process, okay. So for example, uh, the architect come up with the uh, B model, uh, the architect model, uh, where that uh, the, the 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 client or the uh, stakeholder can actually wear that, see, okay, uh, change here. I want I want this to be changed. I want this to be changed. For example, okay, and that design process can be reiterated until at one point the client said okay this is what i want uh stakeholder engagement uh enhancing client and stakeholder representations uh with immersive experiences all right um <clears throat> currently um with the advent of ar and vr we have mr nowadays uh mixed reality okay and mixed reality allows uh, for remote collaboration for example if i if my uh client is uh in joho for example uh the project is in perlis for example okay i can have remote collaboration using vr and ar okay <clears throat> uh for example uh i we uh the uh we call it uh the, the the client can wear their own vr i can wear my my vr we can meet uh virtually okay and we can have that building there and we can discuss virtually okay uh, without having without having uh, the uh, client coming to police or me going to Juho and so on and so forth. Okay. And that can be considered as real-time collaboration tools as well. Okay. Uh, for training and safety as well. Okay. For example, if we have complex uh, project, okay, uh, complex tasks, okay, the, construct the contractors can actually uh, remotely collaborate with the uh, workers on site, okay, using VR and AR for training and safety purposes. And this can actually assist with cross-departmental communication as well, where we can bridge the gap uh, between architects, engineers, and construction teams. Okay, now that's AR and VR. Now let's look at IoT in construction. Again, IoT, the, 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 the purpose of IoT is to provide data, okay, and that data can be analyzed either by manual or software or using AI, okay? <coughs> Uh, each of the IoT systems requires uh, the usage of sensors, networks, data processing units, and user interfaces. Okay, and IoT devices are actually transforming construction site operations. Okay, where currently we have uh, the ability to decide based on data that we have. For example, if we have uh, data on, uh, if we have sensors on structural uh, structural health monitoring. Right, so if any any decision uh, that I'm going to make, okay, that we can uh, that we are going to make on that particular structure can be based on the data that the sensors have been providing. Okay, the easiest example is uh, uh, the weather forecast, for example. <clears throat> okay, uh, weather forecast is actually a type of IoT where that particular IoT is actually um, providing the data on weather, whether it's going to rain, the temperature, and so on and so forth. Okay, and that can be assessed by, uh, by, by, by us. All right, and that particular data can be analyzed if needs to, yeah, if needs be. 
Alright, so objective of IoT deployment, deployment is to on operational efficiency, uh, real-time monitoring and predictive maintenance. Again, similar to AI where uh, uh, AI and, and, and machine learning where IoT is going to provide the data required okay, for the AI and machine learning uh, to predict or forecast. Okay, so IoT can be used for enhanced decision making okay, in terms of data collection, in terms of analysis and reporting, in terms of and predictive analytics and in terms of automated responses. Okay, so basically IoT is going to provide the data and that data can be analyzed for uh, uh, for, for a certain, uh, for a specific purposes. Okay, uh, operational efficiency with IoT. <clears throat> how can we, uh, so how can IoT improve the operational efficiency? Okay, due through resource management. Okay, the use, uh, optimizing the use of materials, machinery, and human resources through IoT monitoring. Uh, in terms of energy efficiency, the simplest one would be uh, a sensor for temperature, for example. Okay, so if you have set the temperature to be a certain uh, uh, a certain degree, okay, using IoT, we can actually monitor and we can manage the energy usage. Uh, for equipment maintenance, uh, IoT enable predictive maintenance to prevent downtime and extend equipment life. Okay, uh, and for safety monitoring purposes as well. Okay, so basically IoT can be used for operational efficiency to improve the operational efficiency of a, a, a construction project or for a, a constructed project. Okay, now challenges and future of VR and AR. Okay, again, integration challenges, uh, difficulties of integrating new technologies with existing systems. For example, we have, uh, we have, in place in construction industry, we have uh, existing systems in place. Now, how can we integrate that particular VR and AR and IoT with these existing systems? Okay, in terms of privacy and security. Okay, so most of the time, uh, when we uh, when we uh, do research together with IT uh, with the IT researchers, okay, we are very concerned on the privacy and security. Imagine if we have a B model of <clears throat> Uh, or, uh, a centralized B model of a uh, sensitive uh, infrastructure, okay, uh, for army, for example, okay, sensitive uh, for uh, uh, hydroelectrics, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, now that particular uh, data is very private and uh, of high security, okay, and it, how how sure are we that the centralized data can won't be breached? Okay, because if we breach the if the data is being breached, okay, then it's going to pose concerns on the security of the uh, particular uh, area or uh, government. Okay, user adoption. Okay, one of the issue nowadays is we have the technology. Okay, but we uh, lack the skills uh, workers on using that particular uh, on that particular uh, usage of technology. Okay, now. Uh, uh, due to that, we uh, in in most of the educational uh, institutions, okay, we have exposed uh, the students on skills required for beam for uh, technologies, all right, and that particular uh, and that method is expected to actually assist in bridging the technology gap for widespread adoption in traditional construction environments where these uh, students when they graduate. Okay, they can actually uh, assist the companies in uh, using the technologies later on when they work in the companies. Uh, future uh, innovations, uh, emerging trends and potential future applications of VR and AR and IoT in construction, especially uh, due to the reduced cost of uh, AR and VR. Uh, the HoloLens that we bought uh, before is costly, is uh, more than 20,000 per set, okay, uh, 20,000 ringgit per set. Uh, but the mixed reality set is just about uh, three to four thousand. Okay, uh, the Hololens that we bought before uh, was about four five years ago. Okay, so means that the cost of VR and AR is reducing. Okay, and once it reduce, okay, uh, the potential of future applications uh, in the future is going to be increasing. Okay, so I have the video on AR and Beam and VR and Beam uh, from YouTube, okay, uh, which you can refer to later. I believe that the moderator is going to share the slides, uh, uh, at least to the students of uh, MASA, 
Okay, uh, so you can uh, look at how VR and AR is being used uh, with BIM for construction projects. All right. So uh, another uh, thing that I would like to um, go through is on the sustainability and ethical considerations of using these technologies. Okay, so we're just going to go, uh, we're just going to touch on this. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail, okay, um, uh, due to time limitation. Right, so introduction to, uh, so what is sustainability? Okay, so sustainability basically is the, the gist of sustainability is ensuring that the future generation uh, will be using the exact same uh, resources that we are using nowadays, including air, water, food, uh, land and so on and so forth. Okay, so in order for us to ensure that, okay, we need to have a certain limitation, a certain assessment, a certain impact assessment for the environment. Okay, so uh, digital technologies are transforming trans traditional construction into sustainable practices. For example, uh, I have one student uh, years back, okay, the uh, studying, uh, researching on the usage of BIM and GBI. So basically, uh, BIM can be used for uh, GBI uh, rating, okay, uh, where we can change the, 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 the features, the, the, the design in BIM, okay, and we can check, uh, we can automatically set, get the, uh, the, the uh, environmental impact or the uh, green building in, uh, index of that particular uh, building, okay. Um, one of the software that we can be used for this uh, sustainability is uh, by a software called CYPE, C -Y -P -E, okay, uh, uh, from Spain. Okay, so they are actually working towards uh, sustainability uh, with BIM, okay, including on the uh, solar power generation and so on and so forth. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so digital technologies are enhancing sustainability. Okay, uh, for energy efficient building design uh, uh, by simulating various environmental impacts and optimizing building performance, okay, uh, by optimizing the material, okay, so basically we reduce the wastage, okay, and once we reduce the wastage, we can improve the environmental impact of the uh, project. Uh, renewable energy integration, so some of the softwares, uh, including CPAIR, CYPE, Okay, uh, CPAIR is uh, integrating renewable energy uh, towards uh, inside the BIM model for analysis purposes. All right, uh, and sustainability metrics tracking as well. Uh, the one done by my students is on the tracking of sustainability, uh, specifically on GBI. So basically, if I have this particular BIM model, okay, uh, what will the GBI be? Okay, so what if we change here? What will the GBI be? Automatically from this uh, particular BIM model. All right, uh, sustainable resource management as well, uh, resource efficiency, uh, digital tools that ensure optimal use of materials and resources to minimize waste uh, in terms of water conservation, okay, uh, in terms of recycling and reuse, in terms of green procurement. Okay, one of the um, uh, one of the impact of technology, okay, of the digital digital technology is. Uh, uh, is being uh, that is currently being highly researched is on green procurement. So basically, uh, if I have a database on uh, on the green suppliers or green contractors, okay, and that supply, uh, that particular database can be linked to my BIM model, okay, to my BIM software. Okay, so basically, if I have uh, this type of uh, uh, specific uh, green uh, material, for example. Okay, I have the number, uh, I have the database on the suppliers able to do that. Okay, uh, directly from the BIM software. Okay, so that is currently being developed uh, by researchers uh, globally, okay, in academy. Okay, impact on ecosystem and communities. Okay, so we have, uh, since we can actually model, we can visualize, so we can have the community engagement, okay, uh, where the, the, uh, that particular visualization can be done not only by the clients, okay, but also by the uh, a community, okay, in terms of biodiversity conservation, where we can see the impact of a project, okay, uh, be, during the design process, okay, without having to go through the construction uh, process to 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 actually uh, assess and monitor that uh, environmental monitoring, uh, social impact assessments. 
and sustainable urban development. Okay, so we have technologies, uh, modeling technologies, uh, VR, AR, IoT, uh, AI, okay, to actually, that can actually uh, assess and uh, monitor and assess uh, this impact on ecosystem and communities. Okay, now ethical considerations. When we talk about technology, we cannot run away from ethical considerations. Okay, so what are the ethical issues? Okay, uh, the uh, of using these technologies. Okay, uh, for example, uh, on the on the impact on the uh, what you call that? Uh, the impact on the labor. For example, now using these technologies, we are actually reducing the labor or manpower for the uh, particular work. Uh, for example, we, if you are using robots or we, are, if you are using 3D printing, right? So we reduce the number of workers. Now, it needs to be ethically done, okay? So that we they won't have, uh, the, we can actually minimize the impact on the labor, okay? So uh, most of the uh, most of the researchers they avoid using minimization of uh, reduction of uh, workers, but instead they they use the term. Uh, the changes of workers all right so basically the workers currently we require workers that is skilled uh, or uh, highly paid okay uh, highly skilled workers instead of uh, labor workers all right so that's the current uh, policy by the government is uh, by the malaysian government as well where they want they they are focusing on this particular uh, uh, highly skilled workers highly skilled all right, uh, under the TVET, okay. Uh, importance of ethics, digital ethics, uh, scope, uh, digital ethics, challenges posed by the technologies in the construction sector in terms of uh, the interoperability, in terms of the interconnectivity, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, ethical aspect of automation, okay, uh, labor displacement, uh, as we have discussed just now, uh, skill development, uh, decision authority, and transparency in automation. Okay, so uh, one of the uh, uh, drawbacks of AI, okay, is that it is not transparent. Okay, at some of the, it is not transparent, meaning to say that if I have these, 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 these particular parameters, okay, the result will be like this. How do we get this result? Okay, usually it is not transparent. It is included under the API, uh, .API format. Okay, so it needs to be transparent so that we can uh, ensure that the decision is accurate based on this all these parameters. Uh, data privacy and security as well. Uh, in terms of data collection, in terms of privacy protections, in terms of data sharing, in terms of cyber security concerns. Right. So um, just a, a few months ago, okay, um, uh, the MCMC is uh, providing grants uh, for cyber security because cyber security is actually one of the uh, if I'm not MCMC, if I'm not mistaken, okay, uh, we have grants for cybersecurity because cybersecurity is one of the biggest concern nowadays. For example, if you have a uh, simplest one, you have Google Drive. Okay, how sure are we that the Google Drive is secure? Meaning to say that uh, it cannot be breached. Okay, because once it is breached, okay, then we have uh, security concerns. Okay, and then uh, lastly is on the digital divide. Okay, so when we talk about sustainability, okay, we talk about uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 uh, okay. For example, uh, for areas, for example, uh, the usage of digital construction, for example, uh, digital twin or beam, all right, requires the usage of uh, connectivity or internet. Okay, what if we have areas where we don't have inter uh, internet connectivity? Okay, we have low internet connectivity. Okay, so how do we address that? All right, so access to technology. Okay, so some uh, a remote areas need to have access, the same access as the uh, urban areas on these technologies. Okay, inclusion in technology design. Okay, cultural sensitivity and fairness in algorithmic, algorithmic decision making. Right, so those are the technologies uh, that is actually uh, uh, shaping the construction industry nowadays. And those are the technologies that we call as digital construction. Okay, and just to mention that these all these technologies are included within these uh, within the latest policy by JKR called Construction uh, Strategic Plan uh, 4.0.
Okay. Now, summary of key concepts. So we talk about the digital construction transformation from the uh, historical, okay, to uh, computer to software to BIM. Okay. And as you can see, the uh, BIM is actually the uh, baseline for all these technologies. All right. And the impact of these emerging technologies on uh, efficiency, on cost, on delays, uh, on on, uh, on uh, time, on speed, uh, on uh, sustainability. Okay, we have discussed on that. Okay, and we have discussed also the role of these advanced technologies uh, towards construction industries. Okay, and we have also uh, discussed on the potential of coll collaboration between multiple stakeholders. Okay, diverse stakeholders within that uh, within construction industry now future trends okay uh, based on the research uh, based on the research world okay we are expecting continued technological advancement okay so currently is the advent of ai okay so most of the research are focusing on this ai on these technologies okay uh, are coming trends like uh, blockchain for contract management Augmented reality for enhanced on-site execution. Okay, so summary of research I've started on that. Um, importance of R&D. Okay, R&D is critical. Okay, in driving future innovations in construction technology. Uh, some of the research, especially uh, in the education journal, okay, they are focusing on the skills development. So basically, we want to provide uh, the required uh, workforce. Okay, that can actually support these technologies okay uh, and collaborative opportunities uh, for future research partnerships particularly in sustainable practices and digital integrations all right so uh so uh sorry i i, I took instead of one hour it's already been one hour and a half uh apologies for that all right so that's the end of the uh, presentation so do you have any questions uh that uh, that you like to discuss? Thank you, uh, Dr. Aide Hizami, for your insightful presentation. Now it's time for our question and answer session. We have received a few questions from our engaged audience. Let's start with the first one. Okay. Does the application of BMI BIM in Malaysia been practices widely? If yes, how about the cost of BIM implementation in project? All right. Okay, thank you. Good question. Um, BIM have already been mentioned uh, in uh, CITP, uh, Construction Industry Transformation Plan, uh, which ended, uh, which is from 2015 to 2020, if I'm not mistaken. All right. And it's being mentioned again in uh, JKR Strategic Plan 4.0. All right. So BIM is currently being mandated for uh, projects with a certain threshold. Okay. And usually the cost of BIM will be bet by the uh, client uh, where, because uh, we need to see when we talk about BIM, okay, we talk about models. Okay. The uh, the, the, the funder of the models would be the one having the model at the end of the uh, project. Okay, so for clients, okay, uh, they are going, they, they have a certain uh, allocation for BIM. Okay, and at the end of the project, the BIM model will be theirs. Okay, so they pay for the BIM models. Okay, and the client, uh, usually they are going to use that particular BIM models uh, as as bit model uh, for facility maintenance, uh, facility management purposes. So uh, to answer your question, yes, it's being uh, widely used nowadays. Okay, and most of the local authority as well, uh, they require submission in BIM format, uh, particularly RBT format. So yes, it's being uh, widely used and the cost is being backed by the clients. Okay, thank you, sir. And the last question, in your opinion, what is the challenges and limitation of implementing BIM in constructions? Okay, uh, there are a few limitations or challenges. I uh, would like to say challenges as compared to limitations because uh, challenges is in terms of skills, okay, uh, and in terms of uh, profit, okay. So skills where most of the uh some of majority of the stakeholders they are not aware of what beam is 
of what BIM is. And because of that, they feel that, okay, uh, we don't have the skill, we don't have, we don't have the facility, uh, so it's going to incur a lot of cost. Okay, uh, whereas uh, this, and we are actually trying to, 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 to solve that by uh, producing graduates who are skilled in BIM, Okay, so that they can work and they can work, uh, work. Uh, they can actually assist the companies when they work later on. Okay, and another challenges is in terms of uh, the profit or the uh, uh, what we call that uh, the benefit uh, re realization of this uh, particular beam uh, method, uh, beam technologies. Okay, for example, uh, for uh, for a stakeholder, for example, uh, for a contractor to use uh, beam. Okay, they need to see what are in store for them. What, how will that uh, particular BIM model, uh, particular BIM practices, BIM technologies impact them, BIM bring profit to them? Okay, so without that realization, they are going to see they are going to see this uh, BIM technology, BIM process as one of the redundant or uh, one of the uh, thing that they just have to do. Okay, so once they have realized uh, the benefit. Okay, then only they can, they are going to, okay, we are going to use BIM because we have this benefit towards us. Okay, and for contractors, uh, the benefit will be in terms of 4D and 5D. Okay, for uh, designers, in terms of 3D. Okay, so the challenges is re making the stakeholders realize the benefit uh, that BIM uh, practices, BIM technologies is going to bring towards uh, their uh, practices, uh, towards their uh, companies. Okay, thank you for the explanation, Doctor. As we conclude today's session, I want to express our gratitude for your insightful presentation on the emerging technologies in digital construction. Your expertise has certainly added value to our understanding of this important topic. On behalf of Masa University, I extend sincere thanks to all the participants for joining us today. Hopefully, the presentation was beneficial for everyone. For all the audiences and viewers, we invite you to explore more about our programs, especially in the Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment and IT, and join us on our open day. Details can be found on our website. Once again, thank you, Dr. Aidi Hizami, for your time and engaging session. Goodbye, everyone, and we look forward to having you with us again in our future webinar sessions.